Hello, I'm Martin from Ashby's and I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you how to use your enforcer with a dual heating system. So um, at the moment we're in the middle of a COVID-19 lockdown so lots of people are getting their machines on pallets rather than coming in and seeing us and allowing us to show them how to use their machine. So the purpose of this video is just to uh, show you everything that we would show you if you're collecting a machine from us in person. Um, I'm being ably assisted by Alana. Say hello Alana. Hi. And uh, yeah, it's not a professional video, but one that I thought we'd do just to, to show you um, how to correctly use your machine and uh, look after it uh, and know exactly what you're doing. So um, yes, if you come around here Alana, I will start by showing everyone the power leads for the machine. So we have a white power lead here. This powers your um, pump and vacuum motors and a black power lead here which powers your heating systems and this one has two heating systems a built-in tank heater and a V2 steam mate inline heat exchanger. Now they can both plug into the wall and it's fine for them to be in one double wall socket If we move around here, actually, we'll look at, take a look at the switch panel. <clears throat> this is a mains on switch, and it starts cooling fans, two of them, one on the side, one underneath. They keep all your electronic components cool and dry. So all the time that the white lead is plugged in, you want to make sure this green switch is always on. Um, it also powers your water pump and your vacuum motor number one and number two. Now, when you switch your vacuum motors on, you want to switch number two on first and then number one. That's number two on first and then number one. And when you switch your vacuum motors off, you want to switch number one off first and then number two. I'll repeat it again. Number one off first and then number two. This machine is actually fitted with two 5.7 inch vacuum motors, one heavy duty, one standard, and they're mounted in series, which is uh, the usual way we do it. We also offer in parallel if people need it, but this is in series, and that's why you switch them on in that order. Here we have a heater switch. It's a three position switch. Up is to turn on your tank heater. So we've got enough water in it, and I'll show you the low level safety cutoffs in a minute. So that comes on. That shows you there's power to it. Actually, that shows you there's power to it, and that shows you when it's up to temperature. And I set it there to 60 degrees. You set it to whatever temperature you want. Down in the middle position is off, and then completely down turns on the, the V2 steam mate inline heat exchanger, which goes up to 110 degrees C. Now, this will not come on until I have the pump running, and I won't be turning the pump on until I've connected up my hoses. But let's have a look inside the solution tank. Okay, so in here you have the solution tank heater. So this chap has chosen to have two heating systems. He's got a standard in-tank three kilowatt heating system protected by a low level safety cutoff. And you can just see two white polypropylene floats. One of them is for the steam mate and the other one is for the heater. You've got to have water above the level of those low level safety cutoffs for the heater to come on. And it also means as the water level drops, it protects the heating element by switching it off so it doesn't get exposed. When you do fill your machine up, always fill up with a nice clean bucket because any metal headed pump, whether it's four, six or 800, doesn't tolerate grit. So our advice is to not use a powder, to use a liquid and also to fill with a very clean bucket. So we have our buckets all color coded, red for dirty, white for clean. And as you can see, um, very easy to uh, fill up this machine. You've got a funnel design here uh, for the solution tank and also pretty much the lip of the bucket fits perfectly in there. So it's very difficult to spill. Just show that again. There we go. But the most important thing is to always fill with a nice clean bucket, one that you have not used for emptying. Because you don't want to introduce any grit into a pump system really, and especially through one with a steam mate in. 
Right, okay, so let's connect up our hoses. Most people collecting machine packages will have two sets of hoses. They'll have a two inch vacuum hose and a one and a half inch vacuum hose or hose sets, a few of, to extend their hoses so they don't have to move up or down the stairs because a machine like this, you leave downstairs, extend your hoses up. So, I'll show you a two inch vacuum hose so you know what one of those is. Here's one we prepared earlier. Uh, it's 25 foot in length, which is 7.6 meters. That's a two inch cuff. You've got a two inch slip to a two inch thread. And that's a two inch vacuum hose. And if I just, you just stay there for a minute, Alana. If I get a one and a half inch vacuum hose, you can see it's obviously a smaller diameter, the one and a half inch. Actually, if anyone was wondering there, what, what's up with my nail, get a close up of that. That's what happens when you shut your, your thumb in the car door. Ouch. So, um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put this hose cuff into the hot water in the, um, there's a little bit of warm water in there, in the solution tank, just for 10 seconds or so. Now that warms it up and it makes it supple so that I can push it on. Um, it's not particularly relevant because it's quite warm today. But if you're getting it out of a vehicle and it was a little bit cold, they can become quite stiff and a little bit more brittle. So they can rip. And just by warming them up, <coughs> you soften them and you make sure they slide on okay. Now, another thing to check with, well, I always check with hose cuffs is that they're screwed on okay. So I don't know if you can see that the blue bit there is seated nicely in there. You just turn it a little bit just to make sure you don't want to over tighten it. Just make sure your hose cuffs are always screwed on and make sure that you're pushing them on and not screwing them on because as you can see, it's a push fit and not a screw fit. So we do that. I'll just get the other end of the hose because I'm going to push a joining tube into this. This hose cuff looks a little bit different. It's basically got a one and a half inch slip so I can put it on any of my tools and a two inch um, thread that's called to screw onto my two inch vacuum hose. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna warm this up for a few seconds in here, just to make sure that it's uh, a bit soft. Then I'm gonna put it into a joining tube, which is basically a stainless steel joining tube. One and a half inch to two inch. That's one and a half, that's two push it in there and really <clears throat> this can live more or less in here because this will kind of always be my extension hose I'd always make the first hose I connect to the machine a two inch hose unless I was only using one hose if I was using one hose I'd use the one and a half inch but if I was using more than one I'd always have just one two inch hose connected because that helps to keep your vacuum uh, as uh, strong as possible um, and then as I come back towards the machine, I would take off my two inch hose, pack it away, and uh, just use my one and a half inch hose. The reason I would only have one two inch hose in my hose run, personally, is because I find them a little bit cumbersome when you're in, in people's houses. They're a little bit stiffer, a little bit less forgiving. So you end up with a door frame that looks like our door frame over here. Unless you've got a corner guard, which is a thing next to it, with big lumps out of it. So you need to be a bit careful of your customers' bits and pieces. Corner guards are quite cheap, about £10, and they protect your, uh, your customers. Actually, I'll show you that. Protect your customers' door frames by basically sitting like that. So, one, they protect your customers' property, but two, they show your customer you actually care, which helps to put your customer at ease and helps to uh, get you invited back. Both of us are tripping over there, I hope no one <laughs> noticed. Right, let's lay the hose out. And I'm going to connect up my one and a half inch vacuum hose. Now a lot of you, when you get your hoses, your hoses will actually be joined together. Your pressure hose and your vacuum hose will be joined together. But today, uh, these are just my demonstration hoses and I've chosen to have them separate. But yours will probably be cable tied together. Do not be alarmed. <clears throat> okay, and that just pushes on like so. There we go.
And now I'm going to connect my pressure hoses. These are the water hoses. So they're the vacuum hoses that suck the water back into the machine. And these are your pressure hoses. Now, with... I'll come over here because we've got better light. Um, with a V2 steam mate machine, which is your inline heat exchanger, it can get very, very hot. They go up to 110 degrees C. So to help uh, maintain the heat and protect your hoses uh, from the customer's property, so when you're laying them on carpet, they can get very, very hot. We have a, a material insulating sleeve that helps to keep the heat in and protects the customer's carpet when the hose is laying on it. And we also have um, a connector which is fully heat insulated as well so you don't burn your fingers uh, when you're disconnecting. To connect your pressure hose to the machine is very, very easy. You pull back the outer sleeve, like so, and you push in the male connector that will snap forward you can always lubricate these with a little bit of wd-40 as well to help them uh, stay supple i'll just lay this hose out and i'm going to join to it another 25 foot hose as well here we go There we go. All right. And then I'm going to connect my wand. Now this is the first thing that I would do always when I get to a job with this type of machine because if I put uh, the heat exchanger on and I haven't connected my tools, I'm going to find it very difficult to put the tools on once all the back pressure has built up behind this connector. So I always connect my wand or the first tool I'm going to use, normally a wand, if you're using a steam mate anyway like so there we go sorry I didn't show you that connecting but it's very very easy squeeze the trigger and just pop it on okay now if we move back to the machine I'll show you uh, the water pump so let's, sorry Lana, let's uh, turn on the water pump and we also turn the steam mate on as well. Now you can see that the, the power lights come on and the heating in progress lights come on and I've set it to 110. 110 being in the 12 o'clock position. Right, if we move round this side of the machine and have a look at the... Okay, the, um, the water pump side here. This is your pressure gauge and shows you the pressure you're working at. This is a pressure regulator here. And this is a flow rate control here. So this is your pressure regulator, this is a flow rate control. The pressure regulator allows you to drop the pressure whilst maintaining your flow rate, as you can see. And your flow rate control, which is the one underneath, allows you to a lot more rapidly drop both your pressure and flow rate. I would use the flow rate control all the time to alter my pressure. About 150 that you see there is perfect for upholstery. And 400 is perfect for cleaning all your carpets. Now if we move back to the uh, heating in progress light on the heat exchanger you'll see that it hasn't gone out yet now this light will take about four and a half minutes to go out so we're going to cut the video here and we'll come back when it's warmed up i thought i'd take this opportunity to show you our silencer um, this helps to keep the noise level down when you're working in people's homes or if you're working in nursing homes hotels hospitals offices, places where you want to keep the noise level to a minimum, this is the thing to do just that. Um, it, I like it because there's no electrical components, very, very uh, easy to use and nothing really to break on it as well. So it's like a baffle, hangs on the rear handle of the enforcer here and then it just fits to the machine's exhaust which is here. 
So I'm going to turn the machine on in a minute and show you the difference in noise level. First I turn on vacuum mo motor number two, then I'll turn on vacuum motor number one. And as you can see, it really, really helps to drop that noise level. Now I'm going to turn on the water pump. And we're going to move over to the wand. Okay, now we're over at the wand. I'm going to talk to you about how to use the wand correctly with your new machine. Um, I wanted to say earlier that we let the machine run for four and a half minutes with the pump running. And that's because basically we wanted the heat exchanger to warm up, to get up to temperature initially before we start cleaning. So once you're, uh, if you're stopping and you're just moving furniture around or you're stopping and you're um, just pre-spraying and things like that, you don't need to wait four and a half minutes each time. That's only when your heat exchanger is from stone cold, when you've taken it out of your vehicle. A bit like when you start your car, expecting hot air to come straight out of your air conditioning system. It's not going to happen until the engine is warm. So that's why we were waiting four and a half minutes for it to warm up initially. And you just wait for that heating in progress light to go off. So we've done that now, and I thought I'd show you the correct way to use your wand. Now, you want to be working in one meter strips from the starting at the furthest point and working back towards you. So if we will squeeze the trigger and the water will start to come out, and we do about a meter or so, release the trigger and pick up with two dry passes, and then move across to the next bit. Now, the reason this is not coming out hot at the moment is that we have 50 foot of cold in our hoses. So it's important to remember that if we're cleaning, we're always going to get slight fluctuations in temperature due to the water being heated as it flows through the heat exchanger. So for example here we're having to use that, as I've said, 50 foot the cold water before it starts coming out hot. Now you can see it kicking in. Always do those two dry passes because we don't want to let the water penetrate the back of the carpet. I know it's just the carpet tile, but we always want to pick up as we work with one wet, two dry. And I always get that last bit by releasing the trigger and continuing to pull back. Let me show you what I mean. Squeeze the trigger. Release the trigger, get that last bit, and then just pick up, including any side spray, before moving to the next area. And as you can see, steam may start to kick in now, and that's how your temperature will be maintained throughout the duration of your clean. is with this area here of the wand level with the floor, parallel to the floor. So you don't want to be down here where air is being released from the head and you don't want to be up here. Just with the wand level to the floor. If you take a look at the wand, you can see you've got a vacuum slot there to recover your water and you've also got two spray jets there and there which spray down the water. That's always sucking, and this is spraying when you squeeze the trigger on your wand, which is here. When you put your wand down, never put your wand down like this, because you will cause a leak quite rapidly here. Always put your wand down like this, so that you're not putting any pressure on this part. I'm gonna go back to the machine now, we'll switch it off, and I'll show you where all your dirty water goes. Switch off the water pump, switch off back motor number one, and then back in motor number two. If we take a look inside here, this is where all your dirty water ends up. It's called the recovery tank. You have a high level safety shut off there, 
which is that cage and you see that you've got a float ball in there so as the water level rises the float ball will float up well it will basically rise and then the air pressure will suck it up and mechanically block off your vacuums so the vacuum motors will sound high pitched you'll be getting no vacuum at that point it's time to turn off vacuum motor number one then vacuum motor number two and empty into your designated dirty water bucket the one you've never used for filling okay now when we want to change tools on this particular machine we want to depressurize I've got the pump off at the moment I've got my vacuums off at the moment but what I don't really want to do is disconnect a tool and not rapidly reconnect my next tool and I always want to depressurize before I disconnect that's because it's asking a lot of the connectors on let me explain actually by showing you sorry here we go it's asking a lot of this connector to seal against such high pressure so I always want to dis I, I always want to depressurize I've got a bucket here which is perfect for doing just that before I disconnect now I haven't got my pump on so there'll probably be quite a lot of back pressure even without my pump being on sometimes there can be a lot more than this so I'm just relieving that pressure so that the connector is not under so much strain when I disconnect and if I show you what I mean I can now easily disconnect and easily reconnect because I haven't got back pressure trapped here where I'm trying to force it on against all that pressure show you one more time so that's because I've depressurized and you always want to do that with a steam mate machine before you disconnect anything whether it's a connection to the machine or your hoses or one to a tool always depressurize always release that pressure don't just take them straight off and that will mean that your female connectors will last a hell of a lot longer let's put this one down again okay so what we're going to do now we're going to use the pump out hose to empty our machine's solution tank our clean water tank right this is your pump out hose it's about a meter or so long well it's probably more than that things about five foot in old money um, has a male connector at one end and an open end at the other end and it's used to drain your clean water tank into your dirty water tank and then you empty it into your red bucket and it's a great way to keep your um, your, your dirty water tank nice and clean because you can give it a rinse round and it also um, helps to prevent any damage to the vacuum motors and things like that when you're emptying so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect my solution hose from there and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the open end in to here into my dirty water tank I'm going to shut the lid and I'm going to make sure that's well and truly seated inside my dirty water tank before I then put it into the female connector here because if I didn't do that and I just had it in my hand you basically are sticking an open-ended connector directly into your steam mate and it can come out very very hot and very very fast uh, it's the sort of thing you'd only want to do once because I depressurized earlier that you saw in the video um, that's why you haven't got such a large output of, uh, of steam coming out because I've already depressurized so always remember to depressurize and always remember to put the open end of this hose into the solution into the recovery tank uh, before you connect the male connector now I'm going to turn on my water pump and I'm going to pump the water from the clean tank into the dirty tank I'll also turn off my steam mate that's my water pump on I'll turn off my steam mate there and if we look around here you can see that we're pumping out the water now with our vacuum motors not running not running that's double underlined we want to give that cage a bit of a rinse because in reality that would have a lot of pet hair and um, 
fluff and everything from our carpet. We can also carefully run the hose round here just to give the tank a bit of a rinse. Put that back in and I'm going to close the lid. Always make sure you close the lid down on it so it doesn't vibrate out. These 400 PSI pumps, the 6 and the 8, they all have a bit of judder to them. So we don't want that vibrating out onto the floor and pumping out. And then I empty into my dirty water bucket. This is the one that I've never used for filling and never would use for filling. Because we do not want to introduce any grit into our pump system. Okay, so we're just emptying out the last bit now. And if we take a look in here, you can see that your mushroom filter, the intake filter, which is that guy there, the water is just, it's exposed and it's, if we look at the end of this hose here, it's mainly air that's coming out. So at this point, we don't want to let the pump dry run. We're never going to be able to pump every dribble out of the machine, so we just switch the water pump off, which is around here. Disconnect our pump out hose, like so. And empty the residual into our dirty water bucket. It's coming out nice and clean now because it's the clean water we've pumped out. And we've given our tank a clean. Another nice feature about the Enforcer is that it drains to nothing. So if you look in there, you've pretty much got rid of all, all the water nothing left so no need to tilt the machine forward close that off now the last thing you want to do um, with your machine is with this solution uh, recovery tank lid open you want to run both vacuum motors for three minutes now that will draw lots of fresh cold air in um, in through here through your um, vacuum intake and basically dry the vacuum motors out, go through the vacs and get blown out of your exhaust. So we're drawing fresh cold dry air in and we're drying those vacuum motors out so we're not packing them away condensated, we're packing them away nice and dry, which will really help to extend the life of the vacuum motors. So I'm going to do that now, I'm going to make a bit of a racket, we'll cut the, uh, cut the film and come back in a moment. <laughs> Okay, now that we've let that run for three minutes, we've got all the fresh cold dry air in through our vacs, we've dried them out, they're no longer condensated, um, and that's how they like to be, so they're ready to be packed away. Close that down, and we can disconnect the silencer, which just pulls off. Pop that over here. Right, I'm gonna show you how to um, wind up your power leads now. Just take the lock and front caspers off. Move it forward so Alana's got a bit more room. Should I spin the machine round? Actually, you've got plenty of them right there, so let's do it this way. Right, so first thing we need to do is switch off our mains power. Switch off the power at the wall. Unplug both leads. Now, The black lead, which is on the bottom, goes to the bottom cable wind. So that just goes like this, anti-clockwise. Let's wind that up. Now you want to do it fairly loose, but fairly neat. Because we want to be able to dock the plug in this area here. That stops it getting crushed when we're loading it in and out of the vehicle. Helps to keep the plug intact, which is always good. There we go. And as you can see, that just plugs in there. And I always just play with that a little bit just to get it tight. So it's nice and neatly wound, safely stored, ready for me to tilt and roll into my vehicle. The white lead, which is the top one, goes to the top cable wind. We just go behind that area there because that's where it rolls in and into the vehicle. Up onto the top cable wind, and again, fairly loose fairly neat because this one is going to dock 
here. There we go, and you can see here it doesn't look like it's going to reach, but all I need to do, play a little bit with that, and then I can dock it, and everything's all nice and neat and tidy, ready for me to tilt and roll it into my vehicle. Okay, so, just to recap with this machine, always fill with a nice clean bucket, one that you've never used for emptying into, because you want to have it free of any, um, any debris, any grit, any fine particles. Avoid using powders. Go for a nice liquid detergent, good quality liquid detergent. Um, always really put most of your detergent down as a pre-spray. Use the machine as the rinse, ideally, and put any finishing sprays down afterwards, things to fix the colour, brighten and freshen. Don't let the machine freeze. Um, not particularly relevant right at the moment, but in the winter time, don't let it freeze because things can crack. Um, always depressurize before you disconnect. So before you just disconnect your hoses, you change tools, always ensure that your pump is switched off and that you squeeze the trigger on whatever tool you're using to release any back pressure before you disconnect. And you'll need to do that into a bucket of some description. Um, always at the end of the job use the pump out hose to empty your machine. That was that red hose, this red hose here. And always, always, always ensure that you've one, depressurized and two, that you put the open end into the recovery tank and you close the lid before you put the male connector into the female connector of the machine. Because if you do not, any back pressure that you haven't got rid of will come out of the open end. So you always need to make sure that it's safely put into the recovery tank before you do that. And at the end of the job, always run the vacuum motors with this recovery tank lid open, as you've just seen me do for three minutes. And that will ensure that your vacuum motors are nice and cool and dry when they're packed away and you'll get maximum lifespan from them. Thank you for watching this video. Um, Hopefully we'll be able to do handovers uh, with instruction in person coming up soon, but due to COVID-19, we can't. If you've got any questions in the, in the interim period, you can always give me a call. Uh, the telephone number is shown at the bottom of this video, or you can just send us uh, an email. Uh, but the easiest way, if you want to get a quick answer, is just give us a ring. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.